All right, it's Mr. Rops here, and we're going to do a video on type 1 and type 2 error uh, with a binomial distribution. So if we read this problem, Ben lives in the college dorm and regularly orders pizza for dinner. He believes that his pizzas are late 35% of the time. His roommates believe that it is less than this. They decide to keep track of the lateness of their pizzas for two months. So 61 days in total. So state a suitable model for the number of times pizza is late and any assumptions you are making. Okay, so if I introduce a random variable x, okay, I know this is a binomial situation where I'm going to have 61 days of trials and my probability of being late is 0 0.35. Okay, and so if I consider now a... Uh, hypothesis test, I know the null hypothesis is going to be that the probability of pizzas being late is equal to 0 0.35 and the alternative is going to be because we're looking for less than this, they believe it's less than 0 0.35. Okay, and so we know each day or we have to assume each day the pizzas come it's independent of the previous days. It's either late or it's not late. And there's a fixed number of trials of 61. And so here are our hypotheses. Okay, and so now, if I think about creating the critical region for this test, I have to think about what does this actual test look like? And so if I think about this, I think about here's my probability being 0 0.35 is my this scenario here. I know that there's a bunch of little bars here, all representing a probability of some kind. And drawing lots of bars, I Okay, and I know that somewhere along the way, so I know that there are like, it could be 12 pizzas or 13 pizzas or 14 pizzas, 15, 16, 17, going backwards. I know there's a, a very tiny probability that exactly 12 of the 61 days it will be late or exactly 13 of the 61 days will be late. It is impossible for a binomial to have like, 12.5 late days. Like it's either late or it's not late. You can't have partial. And so it is a discrete distribution here. And so I think about bars as opposed to a normal curve. So when I work on this, so I want to find the critical region. And so I want to find it's less than, so I'm looking for the bottom end. I'm looking for when I add up all these little bits of these bar graphs, which are very small, I want that total to be alpha is 0 0.05, so I need that total to be less than 0 0.05 for alpha. And I have to find the x value that does that. So one of the techniques that I do to do it, I go to my calculator, I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to do, in here, I'm going to do a binomial CDF. Binomial CDF, and I have 61 trials. The probability is 0.35, and I'm going to do x trials. And I'm going to paste that into my y equals, and then I'm going to look at my table. Okay, oh, I should start my table. Let me start my table at 10. And we're going by ones, and if I look at my table now, so looking at my table, I can see my cumulative probabilities. And so I know when I'm at 13, I'm at 0 0.3, when I hit at, or 0 0.15, 14 0 0.03. When I hit 15, it goes to 0 0.55. So I know that my what's happening is here, this is going to be my critical region. So if this value is less than 14, then I will reject the null hypothesis. It's not 15, because 15, it's over 5. I want this probability to be less than 5. And so what the probability is I'm actually trying to find, if I want to talk about notation, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for the probability that x is less than or equal to some value a, given, given that the that uh, the probability is 0 0.35. And that, 
So I want that to be less than or equal to 0 0.05. And so I know A is equal to, in this case, 14. I want this. That's my critical region. And so my probability of a type 1 error, my probability of a type 1 is going to be simply, it's going to be looking at here, is going to be 0 0.3001. So 0 0.3001. 0, 0, 0 is my probably a type 1 error. All these little bars added up. Okay, so now that is my critical region and probably of type 1 error. Going to C part now, I'm going to, uh, let me see, let me take this here and move it down. So here is my okay for C part type two early interactions with pizza guy makes them think it's actually late thirty eight percent of the time okay even though they thought it was less so that means that there is another scenario here of all these little bars, of all these little bars of like, there's probably 12, and of 13, and of 14, and of 15, and of 16, and of 17, and so on, all these little bars added up, that the probabilities are slightly different, these bars are slightly different, for my probability being 0 0.38. Okay? And so, for this particular situation, what I want to find for a type 2 error, well, I know this is my critical region. I want to find that probability on that side. I want to add up all these little areas. And so if I want to do that, if I want to do that, I want to find the probability that x is bigger than or equal to 15, given that p is equal to 0 0.38 this time. So if I want to find bigger than 15, that means the whole probability, everything is 1, I'm going to 1 subtract this one. This is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 14, given that p is 0 0.38. And so thinking carefully about these numbers here is really important. So when I do this calculation now, 1 minus the probability of binomial CDF, I know it's 61, this is 0.38. I want this to be 14. I get a probability of 0 0.9. 0 0.991 is my probability of a type, type 2, which is quite high. Okay, so be careful with binomial distribution with discrete. Think very carefully about which side of the line you're, you're on. I draw these diagrams or I get confused about what's going on to help me out. And so this is type 1, type 2 error for a binomial distribution.